So good. Go ahead and grab a seat, everybody. Oh, man, I love these services. If, if you love to be in church, say yeah. yeah. Man, I, <laughs> I love it. Ben, thank you so much. Thank you for singing that song, First Love. It, it was a request because our prayer focus for today is that we would be so in tune with our first love. I want you to look at Revelation chapter two with me. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. If you have a physical Bible, that's the best. And if you have um, digital and you wanna pull it up, great. It'll also come up on the screen. We're looking at Revelation chapter two. These are the words of Jesus. That's interesting. I've only got a couple of verses to read tonight and they are all only the words of Jesus. No, no other apostle or prophet, just the words of Jesus tonight. And he's speaking to a church, the church of Ephesus. We're studying the book of Colossians. Paul, while in prison in Rome, wrote to the church of Ephesus. He wrote Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, and the book of Philemon. And here is what Jesus has to say about this this church, the church of Ephesus. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven gold lampstands. He says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. So this is, he's commending them, this is good. And you have persevered and have patience and have labor, labored for my, my name's sake and have not become weary. All commendations, all good things. But verse four, he says, nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. That you've left your first love. How many know that Jesus is the one who actually gets to measure a church. How good it is, how effective it is, how pure it is. The idea of an x-ray, you know, we see physical bodies on the outside. Things can look good and not be good. The same thing can be true in a church. Things can look good. It can be crushing metrics and key performance indicators and like all kinds of stuff. And it's really kind of what was going on here with the church of Ephesus is a lot of good, a lot of commendation, but only Jesus is the one who kind of has that x-ray vision that can see what's going on inside. You're at a church led by lead pastors who have a healthy fear of God in us that we want Jesus to write to our church with a good report. Not just what the world says is good. We're adding people. We're adding smaller chairs. We're, I don't wanna say more. I don't know, but we're adding lots of stuff and we're building a building, right? You're like, um, we've got plans, man. We're just sitting, we're doing, trying to accommodate this growth. And, and, and we're going, that's awesome. But Jesus, what do you have to say about this church? I'll slow things up if we're just gonna keep crushing stuff and growing and feeling good about ourselves and you're not pleased, right? I'm, I'm here to tell you, like, I believe you would write a good letter, a good report. And we wanna keep it that way. I also know that a church is made up of individuals and so you can't just paint with some massive broad brush because there can be some that maybe the church or the church leadership or the elders of the church and stuff doing a good job but then maybe others in the church have left their first love. The inverse could be true as well. But what he's talking about our first love, he's talking about Jesus. He's talking about you and me. He's like, "But, but if you're doing all this great stuff but it's not you and me, and it's not flowing from that place. What, what are we doing? This is, this is 
the risk of getting caught up in what we do instead of why we do it. And everybody is at that risk at all times. It's so important that we return. It's so important that sometimes we reset. It's like nobody is going to be crushing it 100% of the time. Nobody. We, we have to ongoing, ongoingly repent. We have to ongoingly reset and come back and say, I do not want to leave my first love because if all I do is I go and I do all the things and I'm not centered in, in Christ, we will flame out. We will flame out. Warren Wearsby said it this way. He said, labor is no substitute for love. So you could be on a serve team and you could be giving and you could be leading a small group and you could be all, whatever the things are. And it could be true of Pastor Donnie, of church board members, of staff, of other pastors, of lead teams, of small group leaders, of that we could get caught up into the labor as a substitute for the love. But the labor flows out of the love. Everything that we do as followers of Jesus, it's the overflow of what he has done for us and he has filled us that we should then be spilled out as an offering for the world and for the glory of God. That's how this thing is supposed to go we can be at the risk of always doing and not always, Jesus' words, abiding. Everybody say abide. Abide. Abiding mattered a lot to Jesus. (laughs) And I'm just gonna go out there and say, I think it's probably harder, I would submit to you, it's probably harder to simply abide in Jesus right now than it perhaps has ever been in all of human history because of the distractions, the notifications, the emails, the social media, the politics, the, all the things vying for our attention. We have to be so intentional about abiding. John chapter 15, let's talk about it. John chapter 15 Jesus again, verses four through five. He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Are you seeing this? I am the vine, you are the branches. And he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. The essence of what he's saying is, it doesn't really just stop at just, you can't do anything at all. Like, you can't, like, stand up. Like, no, no, no. You can't do anything of value and eternal significance without me. And when we look at this, and he's talking to the church of Ephesus, it's so we could look at the whole first four, three verses and be like, but wait, the church of Ephesus, they had a lot of fruit, didn't they? Like, they had a lot of fruit as evidence of what God was doing. No, no, and I would say, no, no, they had a lot of activity, not necessarily a lot of fruit. A lot of, a lot of busyness, not necessarily a lot of fruit. What we're called to do is leave fruit that remains with our lives, fruit that remains, that is lasting. Fruit can only remain if it flows out of Jesus in us. It can't, we can do cool things without Jesus. We can't do things that remain without Jesus. We can't do things that are rooted, that will make it through some storms, that will stand the test of time, that can build from generation to generation to generation without abiding in Jesus. We can do a lot of activity and just run ourselves into the ground and do it and be like, glory to God, like we're doing it for Jesus. Are we though? Like, we're called to leave fruit that remains. 
what's sad is this church, Ephesus, does not remain today. It's not there. The once glorious city of Ephesus is now but a heap of stones and no light is shining there. So what do we do? What do we do? Look at verse five, Revelation. Back to it. After he says, but nevertheless, you've, I have this against you that you've left your first love. It says, remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Wow, wow. By the way, everybody, Jesus was serious because that's what happened. It's not that Ephesus isn't there anymore. There's no light. It's just rubble. It's just some ancient stones. So Jesus, the good thing, and this is what I love so much about Jesus is that there's always invitation. There's not condemnation. So like, what do we do? He tells us, okay? I wanna, I wanna read it one more time, verse five. Go back, please. It's just important, that the words of scripture. Remember, therefore, that word matters, from where you've fallen. Repent and do the first works or else I'll come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. So can I tell you also that um, one of the reasons, church, everybody, I want the staff here to hear me as well, everything, um, this is one of the many reasons that we do these days of prayer and fasting a minimum of twice a year is because we're gonna make sure that the light is shining. We're gonna make sure that we're abiding. We're gonna make sure that we're resetting when we need to reset. Like, and we're gonna invite everybody corporately because we need sometimes to reset and return. So he says three things, remember, repent, and do what you did at first. Okay, so here's what you do. You remember, you remember, you remember your first awakened passion for Jesus when you first came to him. For some of you, that's, what, that's, that's absolutely what you need to do in the first minutes of our 20 minute time of corporate prayer is you need to get there. You need to go. And I'm talking about remember, like get into your senses. Like remember what it felt like. Remember what how, what, where you went with it, how you talked, how you, bro, over here, uh, what's your name, man? Is it Vinny? We met a second ago, right? You gave your life to Jesus how long ago? A month ago. Come on, give it up for Vinny, everybody. Bro, you are, you are in that, let's go, like bright-eyed, what do you got, Jesus? You're so good, this is amazing. And, and what you have to do, and what we all have to do, is never leave that place. I love you, Vinny. I don't want to be a professional Christian. I will quit before I'm a professional Christian. And I'm not going to quit. We're good. Everybody, we're good. But I just, in my soul, like in my heart, like, so what I have to do and what I'm gonna do with you and I've been doing today is remember? This stage used to be green. It was hideous. <laughs> but it was cool then with, yeah, with trees. I don't. And there were stairs. And my parents invited me to pray with them, like some of you have done here, and my kids here. And there was a time that they were, we're praying for so stinking long that I'm gonna follow me, camera, here we go. Um, that I was like this, and I was leaning forward, my feet were on the first steps, and I'm like praying, because I'm, I'm supposed to, because everybody else is. And I fell asleep. And I so fell asleep that I fell forward and went head first and got a big rug burn on my head here and then went to middle school youth camp 
or it might have been element. I don't know what. It probably was sixth grade, and was out in the sun for like all day for like a week and got this crazy sunburn that the mark stayed there for like a year and a half. It was crazy. It's a true story. But hold on, I'm gonna stay here. Um, but there was also a time in the same place through the consistency of showing up and being in the presence of God that the Holy Spirit got a hold of me. And I, I bawled my eyes out and I told my parents, I don't know why I'm crying like this, but I just feel so loved and I just love Jesus so much. So we have to remember and not leave. Literally lean in to all of your senses and experience that again and say, I want to come home. I want to come back to that. I don't want to leave this place. And inevitably, we, we get carried away and we, we start chasing the things and doing all the things that we think we're supposed to do and start trying to build out our paths and all that kind of stuff and whatever. And it's, that's good when Jesus is with us and we're abiding in him and he's leading us, but sometimes we just get ahead. And so what we have to do is what he said. He said, remember, and he said, repent. He said, repent. And repent literally just means to, to turn to change your mind, to change your mind. Like, like, okay, my mind has been going this way, it's been going this direction, but I'm, I, no, no, I need to change my mind and I need to remember and I need to come home and you might need to weep if that's been lost, if that first love in you has just been lost. Like, weep for that. Ask for it again. Some of us are like, we need to pray God, stir up in me a hunger and a thirst for you because I don't feel it, but I want to. And so I'm, I'm here and I'm open and, and, and show God you're serious with fasting. I'm fasting. To abide in you, to remember and stay rooted in you and then go back to the start. Because that's what he said. He said, Remember, and then he said, repent and do what you did first. You see, the church of Ephesus, here's the good news of Jesus, and it's new, and it's fresh, and it's felt, and it's exciting, Vinny, right? And it's like, let's go, let's go. Like, what do I gotta do? I'm, I'm so in, this is amazing. And so they did a lot, as we should, because that's the overflow of what Jesus is doing in us. But the danger is that at some point we just do so much that we're not abiding and then we get burnt out and we forget why we're doing it in the first place. So we have to go back to what we did at first and that is be in awe and wonder of Jesus. Gratitude, humility, thanksgiving, worship, pursuing him. Guess what? You're doing a great job, you're here. You could be other places on Monday night. You're here. So come back. Walk and talk with God. Pray without ceasing. Be intentional about where you put your attention. Because where your attention goes, yeah, come on. Where your attention goes is where your affections will stir up and go all the more. So give him your attention. Our first value of a church, as our church is love God and love people because that's what Jesus said is the most important thing and it starts with that, that we love God first and out of the overflow of that, we love people and we do for people and we serve people and we get involved and we're generous and we do, but it's because we first love God because he first loved us. Let's return to our first love, everybody. I want you to know that we have prayer, a prayer guide on our website, victory.org slash prayer and fasting. Victory.org slash prayer and fasting. And a couple of the verses here that I shared are on there. So if you wanna look at those, 
um, and you wanna have that as your prayer guide for the whole week, definitely follow it. We also have some resources on fasting. But let me pray for us here and lead us into what we're gonna do is 20 minutes of corporate prayer. I'm encouraging everybody to pray, and watch this, I'm encouraging you to pray out loud. Because as we look at scripture, 98% of the time, prayer is happening verbally and out loud. And I believe that our Father loves to hear our voice. And so what we do, this is how we do it, we play the music at a little bit of a louder volume, not to annoy you or blow out your eardrums, but to encourage you to feel comfortable enough, if this is new to you, to pray out loud and know that nobody is like listening in and judging your quality of praying, okay? Like that's not how we do it here, nobody does. And this is a total free, free 20 minutes. So if you want to, we even encourage, walk around the room, come down here and kneel. Uh, if you wanna walk around the other third space areas in the church and pray, sometimes some people will go out into the parking lot and pray, and then at the end of that 20 minutes, we're gonna close it out with song and thanksgiving again and sing that again. Sound good, everybody? Let me pray for us. Jesus, we love you and we are so grateful that you love us. That's what goes first. Your love for us goes first. And we love because you first loved us. And so I pray you would stir it up in us, God, that you would do a new thing in some of us. And I pray that you would help some of us remember and repent and go back to the start in you. I pray that we would be a church on fire that also has roots, that is committed to abiding. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen. amen. Come on, let's do it, everybody, let's pray.